Hi Econ students and welcome back. Today's topic, macroeconomic objectives. In macroeconomics, aggregate variables such as our macroeconomic objective act as indicators for our policy makers, which they analyze in order to facilitate their decision making. Additionally, macroeconomic objectives are used to measure the performance of an economy. As these objectives are used throughout the globe, this enables us to determine how we perform compared to other economies. These objectives can be seen as performance measurements, which enables us to determine the health of an economy. In economics, the five broad macroeconomic objectives are as follows. Economic growth, price stability, equitable distribution of income, full employment and external stability. Let's take a closer look at our first objective, economic growth. Economic growth entails an improvement or increase in both production and employment. The measurement used to analyze the performance of economic growth is known as our real GDP growth. In order to determine whether the economy has grown, we will use the following formula. Real GDP from our current year minus real GDP of our previous year divided by real GDP of our previous year multiplied by 100 over 1. It's important to note that the measurement calculates economic growth by using real GDP, not nominal GDP. A detailed explanation on the difference between real and nominal GDP is coming soon, so stay tuned to the YouTube channel. But what is GDP? GDP can be defined as the total value of all final goods and services produced within the boundaries of a country during a specific time period. Great work! Our first objective done. Our first objective, economic growth, and our measurement, real GDP growth. Our second objective, full employment. Remember, we are not considering the entire population, only the labor force. In order to determine employment, we are going to use our labor force, where the unemployed are not part of our employed statistic. The remainder of our workforce are therefore the employed workers. In order to measure full employment, we will use the unemployment rate. The unemployment rate is therefore our unemployed divided by the labor force times 100 divided by 1. For more details and explanations on unemployment, please be sure to watch the previous explainer video. And that concludes our second objective, full employment, measured by our unemployment rate. The next objective, price stability. Price stability relates to the cost of living, also known as inflation. Inflation entails the increase in price levels in general. In order to protect the value of a currency, price stability is considered as one of the most important macroeconomic objectives. In order to measure price stability, we will use the inflation rate. The inflation rate can be calculated by using the CPI or our GDP deflator. For a detailed explanation on the CPI and GDP deflator, as measurements for the inflation rate, please be sure to watch the previous explainer video. Our third objective, price stability, measured by our inflation rate. Our next objective, external stability. Each country forms part of the global economy. The inclusion of the foreign sector therefore enables us to study the link between the rest of the world. In order to measure external performance, we will look at our balance of payments. The balance of payments account represents a summary of all the transactions by our households, firms and government within the economy, but also the rest of the world. 
The balance of payments, BOP, consists of two separate accounts, namely our current account and our financial account. Let's take a closer look at the current account. For trade to take place, countries need to import and export goods. The current account therefore analyzes or summarizes the net imports and exports of a country. Let's look at a quick example in explaining our current account. Suppose that South Africa exports the following goods. South Africa will export grapes, trees and cattle. South Africa's imports consist of the following products. Technology, medicine and engineers. South Africa therefore participates in trade by exporting grapes, trees and cattle in turn importing technology, medicine and engineers. The current account therefore depicts the value of all exports and imports of goods and services in addition to the income flow of a country in relation to the rest of the world. Important to remember, exports are seen as injections into our economy. Secondly, the financial account. This account summarizes the inflow and outflow of funds. The financial account therefore indicates the financial flows of a country in relation to the rest of the world. This concludes our fourth objective, where external stability is measured by means of the balance of payments, which consists of the current and financial account brings us to our final objective, the equitable distribution of income. The last objective aims to address income disparities. The gap between the rich and poor in turn gives rise to inequality. In order to explain this, let's take a look at a quick example. This pizza can be divided into six slices. Correspondingly, we will have six people. For an equal distribution of the pizza slices, this would mean that each person obtains one slice of pizza. However, the allocation for pizza now change. Five slices are now allocated to one person, where one slice is allocated to five people, meaning one person enjoys five pieces where the remainder must share one slice. From our given example, suppose that these pizza slices are actually national income. The example therefore depicts inequality. Due to the unequal allocation of pizza slices, or if we consider the unequal distribution of income. The Lorentz curve and Gini coefficient are the measurements used to evaluate income distribution. For a Gini value closer to 0.0, .0 this means that income is equally distributed as opposed to a value which is higher than 0.0, .0 closer to 1.0, which in turn indicates that income is unequally distributed. The last objective, equitable distribution of income, and we measure this by aid of our Gini coefficient and Lorentz curve. That concludes our video for today. Hope to see you soon.